everybody. Welcome to Build. I'm your host, Brittany Jones Cooper. And today I'm chatting with the cast from BET's Boomerang. Inspired by the iconic movie from 1992, the show follows young black professionals trying to step out of their parents' shadows while navigating social media, identity, and of course, love. Please help me welcome the cast to Tana Jackson, Lala Milan, and Taquan Richmond. Hi, guys. Hi. Girl. First of all, can we look at this poster? I love this photo. <laughs> It's you? so cool. What can you take like what was the shoot like? Was this really fun? Girl, it was stressful. <laughs> it was stressful because it was so long shooting it. You know, you gotta get the angles right, you gotta get the poses right. You know, I had to make sure I was in a proper twerk position. <laughs> You know, so it was a lot, but it was worth it, as you can see. Yeah, I love this photo, and I think it just captures your characters so well. Um, one thing I love about this show is that it is a comedy. It is funny. We, You know, in the clip, it's, just, it's joke after joke. Mm -hmm. But you guys tackle some really deep issues at the same time. So you're back for season two. What do you think fans are resonating with? <laughs> the breakup. <laughs> the breakup between these yeah. two. Yeah, we, we, you, you get to see a lot of... Uh, a lot of stuff that happened in season two, yeah. That's a really nice way to put it. But, you know, that's all I can really say, because otherwise people won't watch. You got to watch it. Right. Well, let's start with your character, Simone. Yes. So Simone is the child of Angela and Marcus, who mm -hmm. we know from Boomerang. It was, you know, Eddie Murphy and Halle Berry. Um, and she's very much trying to carve her own path. Yeah. So where do we see that go in season two? She's working a lot more with Tia season two, so she kind of finds her own in, in that sense. Um, and Tia, Tia comes up, you know, she has <laughs> a know. thing going on. But yeah, she's still, she's still, I think, trying to find her way. Yeah. But there's a lot more of her coming into her own in season two. I'm interested, um, how was Simone written originally? And then what are some ways that you've seen her sort of change or grow as we've gotten, you know, now to the second season? She's, I feel like you see a change in her season two. After what happens with Bryson, she definitely kind of... It's, it's a, I don't really know how to put it. Yeah, I mean, she's very cocky and confident season one. And season two, she still has that confidence, but you see a, she's a little more grounded and she's trying to find her way. Yeah. See, what I think is Bryson grounds her, which 100%. is why I think she's pushing him away. <laughs> and Daquan, let's talk about Bryson because he's just like a good <laughs> dude. Like Exactly. In season two, we're going to see a different Bryson. Um, season one, I think he was like a... You know, he's like on the fence about everything. He's always trying to see one side happy and the other side happy. But uh, season two, we got a whole new Bryson coming. It's going to be different turf. <laughs> <laughs> so, Lala, you said fans care about this relationship a lot. I think we got another mic here for you. Uh, they care about this Hala. relationship a lot. What team are you on? Like, what, where do you, what do you think should happen? Girl, I'm on team money, okay? <laughs> Tia is literally about her bag. She is real life just focused on herself and trying to make her own way, you know? So, of course, she has a relationship here, and she has a relationship there, but she's really kind of just, like, she's still remaining cool. She's neutral, as she's been the whole time, you know? But there's different ways that she actually steps outside of that to where we're like, okay, so you're really stepping it up, you know? I have the same question for you, too. How was she written originally? Because I've seen you on social media, and I feel like there's a lot of you in Tia. So how was she written, and then what did you sort of get to bring to her or add to that character? All right, so Tia was written. It's funny because I don't think she was meant to be comedic relief, you know? <laughs> um, and somehow she turned into that. I don't know how. But it was literally where she was representative a representative for the lgbtq you know and a lot of times we get to see the male perspective but this is actually you know a female who's she's sure that she only likes women you know but she also knows like i'm trying to hustle i'm trying to get it by any means necessary and this is exactly what she's doing so in season one you seen her rapping you seen her at the strip club <laughs> you seen her doing commercials she was gonna do whatever it took to get money you know but this season she's more so honing in on everything she's actually great at and finding her actual niche. So I would say in season one, she was more so all over the place, but this time she's actually more focused on the real version of herself, the best version of herself. Who wrote that song, I'm just saying, though? 
Um, that was my actually it's so this. good. Like the more you listen to oh, it, the more you hey. catch each just time. Just so y'all know, you know, you could go ahead and get it on Apple Music and all platforms streaming now. <laughs> but um, really? That yes, <laughs> I'm going for platinum. It's a real song. <laughs> yes. Oh wow. I'm it's just saying, you, know, you know. So yes, um, who wrote it? It's funny because it was um Brian Michael Cox and his assistant or any he wrote it and we actually went into the studio did the whole process girl I felt like a whole rapper in these streets <laughs> I want to go back to the beginning for a little bit because I feel like your casting is really perfect your voice sounds like Halle Berry to me sometimes yeah like especially <laughs> from Boomerang there's like this softness to her voice in that movie I feel that and I, I feel that. like you kind of channel that so how much and I, I want this for each of you how much did you guys go back and study the movie a lot um, we watched because that movie the show the show is its own living breathing thing but right. if you watch there's a lot of easter eggs and a lot of things that are put in 100% yeah. yeah I mean we actually when we got to Atlanta for season one um, we all had a movie night and watched the movie and not that we hadn't seen it before then but we all sat down watched the movie again and had a movie night but we studied it a lot uh, the two of us we like I mean everybody did but just Knowing my parents and trying to study them, I, I sat down and studied it a lot. For me, I didn't see the movie prior to my um, audition. When I had, when I found out I had the audition, I went and watched the movie, and I was like, "How in the world did I not see this movie?" I felt like you know my black card was revoked <laughs> in that moment. Um, but after I did, I watched it a couple times, but I didn't want to. I'm. I always do like parodies. I want to do exactly like. So to make sure I didn't do too much of trying to imitate the character, you know, that I'm not supposed to be, yeah. I made sure not to overwatch it, but just watch it enough to where I could pick up on certain nuances and stuff like that. Yeah, I was just going to say that same thing. Certain nuances that were in the movie, we try to bring to the show. And I wanted Bryson to be like, almost like Eddie, but like trying to be and just not. <laughs> so okay, I, I wanted to like cut that line to make him so he wasn't too cool, but he was cool enough. That's the thing too with our show. It's you know we're not recreating any characters. It's its own thing. So we did study it, but we also got to bring new characters to life. So it was it was getting to know my parents and th my background, but also being my own individual. Yeah, I was gonna say it is a completely different thing. The only real benefit you have from watching the movie is catching the Easter eggs, right? Like this scene where <laughs> they're doing dishes and then they cut on the couch. You're like, ah, that was in the movie. Like, but otherwise, the you, scene, yeah, yeah. Otherwise, you guys have really created this its own life. Mm -hmm. And I think one thing that I really resonate with is the fact that it is a comedy, but you guys go in on really, really important issues. One for sure, the LGBTQ community, and I think how it's connected to religion and faith. Oh, you know, I see a lot of more. I thought that was really <laughs> powerful season first season because those are two things that we love to think are separate. Yet it is, you know, there are a lot of people who are part of that community who love God. Mm -hmm. So take me through just like the conversations you guys have on set when you're tackling kind of big issues <laughs> like that. I don't feel well for me personally. I don't conversate specifically like with the castmates about those things because I feel like it's case by case per character. Mm. So that's a conversation that I literally have with myself, you know. Um, and RJ, his character, is one of those things, David, to where he goes back and forth with religion a lot. I feel like that's a big part of his character. Tia, I mean, we show up to support him every now and again at the church, but the church is the last place that Tia be at. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And that's just what it is. Tia be more so in the club. <laughs> that's where her money come from. But I wouldn't, it's not that religion isn't a part of her identity. It's just not focused on in this show for Tia. Yeah. But how about you guys? Is it cool to be a part of a show that isn't afraid to sort of lean in and have these kind of difficult conversations or conversations that people will try to avoid? It is. I mean, for me personally, the Us Two episode was, I think, the deepest for Simone. Um, but we don't necessarily talk about it on set. And also, too, our characters may have a different standpoint than us in real life. But, um, yeah, we don't necessarily talk about it on set. But it is really cool to be a part of a show that does bring those things to light. Yeah, the show has a voice, a really distinct voice. And obviously with the creators you have, Lena Waithe and Hallie and every I mean, Dime David, that your director is amazing. Dime David. Dime is ridiculous. Yeah. The show is like cinematic sometimes, mm -hmm. right? Do you ever watch it and you're like, we're on a She's cool fire. Show. 
It she's amazing. Good. Yeah. yeah, girl. <laughs> she's diamonds a beast. Literally, her eye. This is her thing. She's always just like finding <laughs> what she's looking for. I don't on you do that movement. <laughs> and, <laughs> and I be it's like, too early for that. I be finding myself doing that, you know, because I'm like, maybe it'll work, you know. But literally, she has an eye for everything. But back to your initial point. Yes, literally, each character relates to each type of person. Yeah. Millennials, especially in this world. That's why I think it's so lit. Like, we all represent a different type of person that somebody can relate to. Which I think is so important, and we're seeing it more and more with representation. It's not just enough to have representation. Bingo. It's enough to show the diversity in the representation, that there's not a monolith, that people have different feelings, yes. you can listen to different music, you can right. have different identities. And I, I think this is the first time that we're bringing this type of energy to this network. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Touche. <laughs> Network does have a lot of great shows, but yeah. this has a very distinct it's sort different. of different yeah. vibe. Yeah. Um, are any of you like your characters? <laughs> I would say, <laughs> I think, yeah. I mean, I feel like a big, I very much so wanted to be separate from my character, but I also wanted to bring a little bit of me because it's like, I'm a relatable person, you know, and I wanted Tia to be relatable, you know, so... A lot of times, it's funny because even though people be like, you playing yourself, there's a lot of things that really aren't me in Tia. Aside from the sexuality, it's like there's certain things that she freaking says and do that I would not do. You know, um, especially in season two, I'm like, oh, y'all really stretching me out. You know, <laughs> y'all going to see that. But very much so, there are some characteristics, of course, like being funny, naturally funny, you know, but at the same time, there's not, you know, to where she's very strong about um, women rights. I'm very much so pro-woman, all that stuff, but the way that she goes hard for women and she will literally, you know, have an issue with she, her best yeah. friend's dad about. Like, right. I'm more so, like, I would comfort my friend in that time, but Tia, she do not care. She like, your daddy, him too. <laughs> That's why that Us Two episode was so good, because it showed oh, yeah. each perspective and how it is a conversation that we have to keep having, because people don't and probably won't agree. Uh, so you mentioned the Me Too. We have a lot of different issues. In season two, is there like a major theme that we're going to tackle or another like really public issue that the, the kids are going to go after? I and don't I know go. if there's... You get to see a lot more of each character yeah. in season two and you know where we're going in life. So... There, I mean, there's still there are still issues that we tackle, but it's more so each individual, yeah, like in each individual character. Yeah. And so you mentioned that you hadn't seen Boomerang, and, and there's an ep a really funny episode where you guys talk about like the black thing that you haven't <laughs> seen or haven't yes. watched, or don't know how yes. to do. Um, <laughs> Can you guys share your thing? <laughs> like, uh, I don't know how to play spades. Like, I've played it once. Oh, I don't. Me neither. Okay. Girl, I don't eat hot sauce. Is that shameful? So we no, but it's just one of those things where you're like, I don't, yeah, I don't really, I'm The sorry, stereotypical black yeah, stuff, like, yes, girl. I don't eat hot sauce, okay? <laughs> oh, um, wow. I, I don't, you know, come on. So, you know, that, there's what, they be saying all black people drink Henny or Dark. She doesn't drink at all. I don't drink. So, me and Taquan had a, a conversation about how to eat chicken wings. Because there's a way, as a black person, no, no, no. You do, Well, I can't do That's a whole lot. That's racist. Like, but you got to get, you you know, like, you got to make sure you get all the meat mm -hmm. off the bone. Mm -hmm. That's that's my thing. I also can't do that because it gets too, in, it's too much work. That's what I said. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's <laughs> it's yeah. too much work. It's too much love, going on. I can't be spending that much time trying to eat. <laughs> Just okay, just order some I'll more ramen or something that. if, that, if that's going to be the issue. Uh, it seems like you guys have a lot of fun. Yeah. Don't don't spoil anything, but in season two, is there an episode that was especially fun for you to shoot? Or yes. 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 Can you share just sort of like... You can't so, share just too so, much, though. Just yeah. so we'll yeah. get there. Just so we'll get there, we know. But literally, any scene that we all do all together, together is fun. Yeah. Is the... To me, the funnest scenes, like, they're so lit. The energy, that's when they really got to go to work. We they're like, all right, guys, calm down, because we be playing. It's yeah. just natural, fun, good energy. Yeah. So any scene with all of us together, for sure. We, and we all get along really well, so we joke around. It's hard to get us to, like, I mean, we do our work, but sometimes they're like, hey, we're working. Calm down. <laughs> but we, it's, it's a lot of fun when all of us are in a scene together. Did anybody know each other before? You we did, yeah. yeah. We I, actually 
we knew each other, I think, a year or two prior to this show. Did you work together or you just met? Yeah, we yeah, worked We together. had a show on Hulu called All Night. Oh, I remember um, that. That we did together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So then audition-wise, were you the first person selected or how did that whole process work? I think the two of us were cast first yeah. and then, I'm not, I honestly, I, I don't know like I was casted last, girl. <laughs> they didn't want me on the show. They didn't. <laughs> I'm serious. <laughs> They, because I didn't have a traditional, you know, background in acting and I came from social media and they done seen people who came from social media get on a freaking camera and shut down. And they probably thought I was going to do the same, you know, so they was like, nah, we good. So then what was your audition like? My audition went good. Um, it was funny because when I was in the room and I auditioned with Lena and Dime and everybody else, they bust out laughing and I said, oh, I ain't get that one. <laughs> You know, um, but then they and then it took forever, girl. Like I it times went by so much that I was just I forgot all about it at that point. Yeah. So um, but I I was confident because I had did my second audition, obviously. But girl, yeah, it took forever. And when they told me, you know, after the fact why I was like, I'm glad y'all didn't tell me that during because I'd have been sick. You know, when you audition for stuff, like, it can drive you crazy wondering whether or not you got that. Yeah. You know, like, people be freaking out. Yeah. And I found myself doing that, and I was like, because I really, really want this. This could be the time where people get that I'm more than social media. That was just my stepping stone. Yeah. Have you had feedback from your social media community on about you on the show? Yes, girl. Um, my audience particularly very positive, you know, and then of course you get the feedback from people who don't think you did a great job. And I'd be open to that too, you know, cause listen, everybody ain't going to like you at the end of the day. There's, I could have freaking did a amazing performance and some people might be like, ah, she's whack. And that's fine. Because at the end of the day, whenever, you know, I hear something negative, it just makes me sharpen up my skills more. So absolutely. But for the most part, it was great feedback, you know, and I'm looking forward to even more opportunities. I'm trying to be out here, you know, getting all the awards, okay? Oscars and what? Hello. <laughs> <laughs> and to Don and Taquan, uh, did you guys get to do a chemistry test together? Mm -hmm. we, we did, did. yeah. All right, so we got to talk about this relationship. Magical! <laughs> because there is that, you guys do have such a good chemistry on camera. Thank you. So what has it been like? developing that relationship because you know with some of our favorite on-camera relationships you can't let it all out at the beginning and it was like a slow burn for you guys so what sort of work did you guys do just to make sure that felt authentic I mean it definitely helped knowing each other prior yeah. to um I think it helped with the audition and also with the show because we were friends so we naturally had that chemistry prior to so it, it helps a lot bringing that to screen when you already know each other and like you you already have that comfortability do you guys relate to their their journey of being friends but also you know like is that fun to play oh yeah yeah it's, yeah, it's extremely fun i'm just trying to get him to talk <laughs> look i'm looking that's at hard him, like, yeah he's like pulling my contact. i'm like how is it for you well how do you feel <laughs> well <laughs> no well uh, yeah no it was just knowing each other before that really set the tone for it, it was, that was pretty much it yeah. <laughs> That's all you're going to get. That's all I got. <laughs> um, and I, going back to the pilot, you guys talk a lot about the experience for black millennials and just all the stuff we're trying to do and how exhausting it is. So for you each, what do you think is just kind of like the biggest thing that black millennials are having to deal with when it comes to like being professionals and also finding love and trying to just do it all? Everything. Everything. Yeah, no, being like an adult. One hundred. I mean, uh, yeah, like I feel like we have to prove ourselves a lot. Um, and a lot of times people don't look at us professionally. As a black millennial. Yeah. Bingo. So um, it's a lot more of like proving yourself and like I can do exactly what everyone else is doing, if not better. You know what I mean? So like, um, yeah, it's, it's yeah. <laughs> yeah, I absolutely agree. You know, as soon as we go into anything, it's like we're already, you know, just being judged just based off of the fact that we're black, you know? And then it's like, when you're talking over the phone, you'll even sometimes get a look in person like, you are, oh, 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 well, thanks for coming. Yeah, that's me, you know? And that just comes along with it. But we're intelligent 
You know, we are knowledgeable. We have beliefs. We fight for what we want. We go get it. We make stuff happen. We're lit. Mm -hmm. And that's what it is. That, yeah, I like that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's go to Twitter. We got a question from Edward is a man. What is your favorite Eddie Murphy movie? Ooh. Coming to America. Coming, ah, <laughs> damn, you stole mine. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, I like freaking Professor Clump. Yes. You know. <laughs> I, nutty let's Professor. Be, yes, the Nutty Professor. Hercules, Hercules. Oh, what, was, like, what was that one where everything, uh, when he talked, the the tree, the tree, um, things come off the trees? You know what I'm talking about? Oh, yeah. I don't remember the name of it, but I do remember. That was my favorite Eddie Murphy. Where, like, the leaves would fall. I don't remember that? that one. Mine is The Golden Child. Do you oh. remember that movie? Girl. That was so, anybody? Yeah, okay. Like, yes, you, okay. I'm going to go watch it. Yeah, like every Eddie Murphy and, movie, it was on every weekend on like USA or okay. TNT or whatever. And as a kid, I was like, this is cool. The movie that he did, it was kind of recent, but um, Dolomite? Mr. Church. Oh. It was, that one was so good. I didn't see that me. one, but Dolomite was. Dolomite was. Oh, Dolomite was funny. fire, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. so funny. It was really good. Speaking of Eddie and the original cast, um, you know, Halle Berry is an EP on this. You know, I interviewed Robin Givens, and she was like, I would be happy to show up. Because oh she plays God, your mom. <laughs> that would be amazing. We well, have then, one of the tell me how you feel. <laughs> so do we, uh, are we going to see anybody from the original cast ever pop up? Hopefully. You got to watch, but. You guys are so cagey. No, <laughs> girl, probably not. Okay, probably not. You know, we would love to see it. If they do, it's going to be a surprise to us, girl. Okay? And that's just But you real. do get to see some cool people, people season two. We got some fire guests. We got, we got a lot of, yeah. We got some guests. You, we got yes. guests. Joey Joey Badass White. come back at all? I don't know. Who'd you say? Uh, Joey. 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 Oh. I don't know. Come on. <laughs> I right. mean, yeah, see, you got to... tell them watch. No, no, no. You got to watch, yeah. Cause <laughs> I we, hate when they do that because I be wanting to spill enough to get you. That's Girl, I'm going to tell you tease. like this. A little tease. Joey Badass, definitely. And you'll have to find out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we got one in the audience. Hey, girl. Hey. So my question is actually for you, Lala. Um, you inspire so many, including myself, because Thank being you. in this industry is not easy, and yeah. you're doing it. So I was just wondering, has there ever been moments where you felt like you couldn't? And if there were, what did you do to overcome them? Um, girl, every there's always moments where you feel like you can't, you know, but overcoming is simply just being consistent and remembering what's at the end of that tunnel when you do. You know what I mean? And the longest your periods of feeling like you can't actually be lasting longer than when you do. So it's frustrating a lot. But, girl, you got to remember consistency trumps all. So long as you stay consistent, eventually, girl, all them seeds you've been planting, and one of them going to have to grow. Okay? So keep going. Thank you. And one more. Hello. Um, Summer Walker and uh, Sammy... Uh, and a lot of other artists is saying that they have like social anxiety and stuff and you guys are young. How do you guys deal with navigation as being celebrities? I'm more private. I'm yeah. not a big talker. Uh, I don't do a lot of press. Um, I try to stay out of the way <laughs> as much as I can. And for me, I think I'm coming up on like uh, 20 years now in this industry. <laughs> 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 so yeah so yeah so like I, I just try to like stay grounded and stay out of the way but um I have such a big thing to overcome doing press and talking to people so social anxiety for me is real so I really understand that and um I don't think there's any way to get over it I just think you have to just go full force and just try to deal with it head on and um just don't be embarrassed there's nothing to be embarrassed about honestly that's how I feel with it I love how you gave us a whole essay on that question. That is beautiful. <laughs> That's the most we should I've ever ask spoke. about social anxiety more often. <laughs> For me, I mean, she's different. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I know that is real with a lot of people, you know, but I feel like I literally a long time ago accepted that I am who I am and whether you know, you love yourself or not, people going either love you or not like you, you know? But long as you like you, child, you good. So I don't give a fit up <laughs> about what these people got to say. And that's that. I'm, I'm similar to Taquan. I'm very private with my personal life. Um, I think for me, it's finding those boundaries 
with social media. And I do have, you know, like it, it, social anxiety is real for me. Like I have a hard time going to certain events and I definitely always like need my person with me. But you just got to kind of go full force and, and know that, you know, you have that support and you're here for a reason and kind of just try to get over it. What do you do in your downtime, like, to kind of decompress? I watch Dexter. <laughs> Dexter. Dexter's how you Dexter. decompress? Yeah. Just a little murder? Yeah, just a little murder. <laughs> He's <you> crazy. <laughs> but no, I think for me, uh, I, I definitely need my, like, quiet time. Like, when I come back from set, when I, it, I need my moment to myself to kind of decompress and, and, you know, like, breathe it out and, and get back into, like, my own. Yeah, that's why I asked because I, it, you have such extroverted jobs, mm -hmm. so there has to be that introverted side. You have to kind yeah. of rebuild that somehow. Yeah, the first time I met Eddie, actually, I thought he didn't like me. And I was like, what's wrong with this guy? But I, I had to understand, like, when they're not on, they're off. Mm -hmm. So, like, you have sometimes people expect people to be on all the time. You don't have to. Uh, not, I think that's <laughs> the thing with our, I think that's the thing with our job, too. Like, I think a lot of people don't realize we are human beings we're we're normal people so we're not on all the time we do have emotions and we we have bad days and we have our moments so i think that's a lot of people don't realize that and kind of look at us in a, a sense of like like we're not human but you know like i have my bad days i have moments where i just get frustrated or i have anxiety you know like stuff like that that i just have to deal with and navigate I agree with Tatana Legend. We're ordinary people, okay? Yeah, like, At the end of the day. Like Tatana Legend. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and it's one of those things to where anytime. Really good. Thank you. I know I just thought of it on the spot. Um, so for me, yes, to decompress, girl, I chill and I be in the house. I feel like if I don't want to be bothered, don't leave the house. Right. And because when you go out, you do have to be on. You know, whether you out, hell, you could be out there buying pads, girl, and cramping. And somebody, girl, what's wrong with you today? I'm hurting. Okay? But they don't understand that because, because you're an entertainer, they're expecting to be entertained in that moment. Yeah. So I just, I chill, girl. I make content in the crib. That's peaceful for me. Right. You know, such a homebody. Yeah, me too, though. I but I think it. that's part of just being a millennial and being a young black millennial. We talked about the pressures when you're out in the workforce and you're out in the world and you're trying to prove yourself. You have to make that time just to like take care of yourself mm -hmm. and kind of look in. So I love that I can see that in you guys and in these characters you've created. They're so relatable, and I can't wait to see where it goes in season Thank two because y'all didn't give me anything. No Girl, spoilers. I mean, yeah, we gave you. Be, you I gave, gave you some bit. stuff. We gave you enough. Your publicists will be very proud. You did not spoil <laughs> anything. So that means we have to watch, and it's soon, guys. Season yes. two of Boomerang premieres on March 11th. March 11th. Only on BET. Woo! Put your hands together for Tatana Jackson, Taquan Richmond, and Lala Milan. Thank you, guys.